But through it all, Lord Jesus, this morning we give you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. Come on, let's give a high five to the Lord, amen. You can give one to your neighbor, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How's everybody this morning? Ernie, I'm going to need a chair. Yes, how's everybody this morning? You know, we like to welcome you out to Living Word of Buckland, amen. And um, again, you know, um, just a reminder, you know, I have a, a, a couple messages. And, you know, just so we can understand, you know, that um, we have the church. It's still shut down. Um, but still, you know, if we're tuning in, if you're part of this ministry, you know, we encourage you to start, you know, having a watch party, whatever it is. And uh, share it, you know, with, with your loved ones and everything. And, and come and tune in like we're at church. And as soon as uh, we open the services again, you know, we want you guys all to come back, you know, and uh, be a part of it. But also, you know, we still got to pay the rent. So we're allowed to come out here live stream. Um, we got to be faithful with our tithes and offering. And um, every Monday from 5 to 7, we're here. We're here at the church where we can come. And, and if we're writing out a check, you can make it out to Living Word of Upland. And also, you know, a reminder, we also have our ministry, the men's home. You know, um, we have actually 11 guys in the home right now. And uh, they're, they're on fire, man. They, they're excited. They, they can't wait to just come out back to church and all that. But we got to remember, you know, our church has a ministry. We have the men's home. And, and, and if we want, you know, to help out in the home as well, you know, even doing through these times, you know, let's come together as a church and uh, continue to move forward because how many of us know when God begins to build his kingdom, he begins to build it. Amen. How many agree with me this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. And also keep me in prayer for my sciatic nerve. Amen. But um, how many are ready for the word? Amen. This morning. Amen. amen. One person. Hallelujah. Well, we've got at least someone excited. Amen. But I don't know about you. You know, we've been on a topic. We've been talking about the armor of God. Amen. And uh, today I want to just close it because we've been on it on, on a whole month, I believe, already. And I want to just close it today because how many of us know in the armor of God, the last pieces that come together, we need to put on our helmet of salvation and the sword. We need to carry the sword of the spirit, amen, which is the word of God. And that's, you know, one of the, the, the last parts of the armor when Paul was speaking, amen. But uh, this morning, I don't know about you, how many are, are, are ready to put on the helmet of salvation and also pick up your sword, amen. How many are ready this morning? Amen. Hallelujah, praise God. I'm at the right church this morning. But we got to understand, you know, when Paul was writing the Ephesus church, it was the last parts of the armor. You know, we talked about last week, we were talking about the shield of faith. You know, the shield of faith, you know, this is what keeps us moving and trusting God but it also protects us from the firing darts from the lies of the enemy because how many of us know that we have an adversary that's always coming against us to come and try, try to stop what God is doing how many believe that this morning amen. amen well that's the thing that Paul was describing the shield of faith so we talked about uh, the, the belt of truth we talked about the breastplate of righteousness we talked about the shield of peace and we also talked about the shield of faith. These are the protections, the other protection. The last one was the helmet of salvation. But this morning, I want to go ahead and read off the scripture of our main text that we're going to be talking about. And it's in Ephesians 6, 10 through 17. And I'm going to go ahead and read it right now. It goes, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. So we are identifying the devil. He's a schemer. Tell your neighbor, the devil's a schemer. And then it goes on. For our battles are, are, or our struggles is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world. In other words, right now, you know, everything that's going on, you know, a lot of the darkness is already coming evidence of the things that are taking place that we need to start preparing ourselves. Tell your neighbor, we need to prepare ourselves. 
And then it also talks about against the spiritual forces of the evil in the heavenly realms. Then it goes on. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. So in other words, it's telling us, put on God's armor, not our own armor. And then it goes on so that when the day of evil comes, because it will come, you may be able to stand your ground. How many are ready to stand your ground this morning? Amen. And then it goes after you have done everything to stand. We need to stand firm then. It goes on. Meaning, we're making our stand. We believe in Christ Jesus, you know, and all that. But we got to stand firm. Many of us, maybe we'll take a stand, but we won't stand firm. God is saying, you need to stand firm. Amen. And then it goes on, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness with the com that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up your shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And today, what we're going to be talking about, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let's pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word, Father God, that you have prepared, Father God. Right now, Father God, in our minds, Lord, if anything is keeping us captive, Lord, remove, Father God, any kind of strongholds, any things, Lord, that is not of you, Lord. And let us be able to receive, Lord, what your word is going to be ministered this morning, Lord. But through it all, Lord Jesus, we continue, Lord, to give you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. In Jesus' name, the church says... Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give another clap offering to the Lord this morning. So we're talking about the last part of the armor. And it's talking about the helmet of salvation. How many of us know that we need to carry the helmet of salvation with us at all times? Yes. And, 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 and you know, this is a part of, a, the, of the armor of God is to protect our head. You know, how many of us know that we need to protect our minds? And that's why it says to put on the helmet of salvation. You see, a soldier had a helmet which protects his head. How many of us know that our mind can get weird sometimes? How many believe that? Just look at your neighbor real slow. But if he looks like a weird one, maybe the weird one is us. Amen. But you got to understand that our mind, our mind, you know, this is where the enemy comes in and takes place. It's in our mind. In our mind that he tries to distract us, tries to put things in our path, uh, anything that will make us fall. You know, in the Bible, it talks about that Jesus also was tempted. But, you know, Jesus had the word of God because Jesus was God. Amen. So this is why that, that we're supposed to be living by the word of God. And we need to keep that in place. Amen. Which is God's word, which is the word of truth. Amen. But that's what it is. The enemy likes to mess with our mind. And then when he starts coming into our minds and we allow him to, then that's where we start getting distracted. And that's where he ends up doing what he does to derail us from our calling what God has called us to do. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. You see, we all have the helmet of salvation. So many people are confused and unhappy and angry. Seeking um, to try to be happy by turning into it. That's why we have, see a lot of people will turn into drugs, alcohol, anything that will satisfy the flesh, amen. Because they're trying always to look for something to numb them. But that's the thing because they're not understanding the true salvation which is in Christ. And understanding that we're a new creation. How many believe that you're a new creation this morning, amen. <laughs> If you came today, you know, and you're tuning in, you got to understand when we came to the foot of the cross, we, when we accepted Jesus Christ into our hearts, we became new. We're a new creation. The old is gone. And we're out. We're moving into the new life, the new understanding. Now we're starting to live in truth, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we have a new uh, direction coming now with hope. Amen. But how many of us know that the enemy is always trying to take that away from us? Yeah. 
Right now, I, I just as you're sitting there, wherever we're at, you need to tell that level, hey, you lying devil, get away from me right now. I'm not going to believe you. I'm done trying to you to rob me of everything that you have taken from me. But I'm going to continue to believe in faith, continue to move forward, even when the obstacles look all bad. But remember, God is with you. Amen. Amen. Also, in the helmet of salvation, people will turn into these things. Like I said, even relationships and by seeking money and power, all the worldly success. That's what happens. Many of us start getting deceived because we want to look at the world's success. Oh, I, I want to make this much money so I can have all this. The Bible says that what comes from the ground or what comes from the ground is going to go back to the ground. Amen. You're not going to be able to take that to heaven. Stop looking for the worldly success. Continue to walk your course in the things of God. He said, when you have the lowest things here, you're going to have a mansion that's already being prepared in heaven for you. I don't know about you, but to me, man, that's that's good news. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't know if you caught it, but it's good news. Then it says, I would be confused and unhappy and angry too if I believed I was a meaningless product in a mindless place here on earth. Amen. But now, so we're understanding the helmet of salvation. You know, we have been reconciled to God. That the Holy Spirit has been given to us. And that we are going to live forever as glorious sons and daughters. You see, in our mind, our mindset has to be set on that hope. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For he knows the thoughts and plans that he has for us, for a hope and a future. Remember, before we came to Christ, we did not have no future. Amen. Now we're beginning to have a future and hope because we have life eternity with the Father, amen, and the Son. And that's good news for me to hear, amen. That's why Jesus came to this earth, to die for us that were separated from God. And it's time that we need to start waking up. Tell your neighbor, wake up this morning. Amen. Pastors right now ministering. So now we're understanding the helmet of salvation. So, you know, this morning when I was actually reading and getting more uh, in it, you know, I was surprising, you know, of all the stuff that God gives us for the armor. Amen. He gives it all in place. But now, you know, we got the shield of faith to protect us. We got the full armor in front of us. Amen. Remember, when we read the, the Roman soldier's armor, there was no protection in the back. And do you guys know why? I'm glad you guys all asked this morning. But the reason why, because there was no turning back. If you weren't going to fight, if you're not going to go forward, then you're going to go backwards and you're not protected in the back. So that's why we're called to go forward, not backwards. Tell your neighbor, we need to start going forward and not backwards. But then the last part of the armor, God gives us the sword of the spirit. That means that this is where we're going to protect ourselves. Amen. How many of us know that we need protection now? Even though if we're going to go into battle, we, can, we can't just be protecting ourselves and everything. We're going to have to get in the battle. We also going to have to fight. Tell your neighbor, we're going to have to fight. Fight, fight, fight. We're going to have to fight. Because the enemy is not going to just say, okay, you've got your armor on. I'm going to leave you alone. He's not. You're going to have to pick up your sword. Amen. Tell your neighbor, pick up your sword. You see, the sword is the last piece of the armor. It is the sword of the spirit. Which is the word of God. Tell your neighbor this is the word of God. Amen. When we're being lied to. Or when we're being tempted. When we, when we remind ourselves. What the word of God teaches. We apply the word of God. To every situation we encounter. And every decision we make. That protects us. That keeps us safe. When we understand that the word of God. We are able to go the offense and teach its truths to others and it's the word that's going to keep us intact also in hebrews 4 12 reads like this for the word of god is alive and active tell your neighbor amen. the word of god is alive man and active 
And then it goes on. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. Amen? And it goes on. I'm sorry, guys, that I got to stand and sit, but it's all right, because God's here right now. It goes, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing the soul and the spirit. Joints and marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. How many of us know that our attitudes can be kind of weird sometimes, amen? Sometimes, you know, we need to start applying that word of God to our own lives. Letting it come and penetrate into our hearts. Because that's what it, it, what it is. You know, our souls are fighting. Our souls are fighting, but we need the word of God to give us that direction so we can continue to move forward into what he has called us to do. So in other words, we're talking about the word of God that is alive and active. You see, many of us, you know, we, we read the Bible, but you got to understand that the Bible is alive because it's the word of God. It's God's breath that's in it. This is what gives us the direction so we can continue to move forward. If the word of God is not in us, then how is it going to be alive in us? It's just going to be another book. But this is the book that I live by. So I need to apply the word of God into my life. In order for it to penetrate. In order for it to be active. In order for me to be able to minister to people and letting them know the truth of Jesus Christ. But it's the word of God that needs to be activated within our lives. Can I get an amen this morning? Amen. But also, we got to understand that the word of God should be penetrating our own hearts sometimes. Because sometimes, man, our, you know, the Bible describes our, our heart that it is wicked. It describes us as filthy rags, amen, that there's nothing righteous in us. The only thing that is righteous that is in us is when we accept Christ Jesus into our lives because he's the only thing that was righteous. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person, but sometimes we've got to understand since we wake up in the morning, we already have sin in our mind or we're mad at somebody, maybe from the night before, whatever it is. But we've got to understand that the word of God should penetrate into our heart. And then it says, it's the word of God that will pierce Darkness. But what darkness are we talking about today, this morning? Today I want to talk about the darkness that sits in our hearts. Amen. Amen. In other words, this morning, do you see the word of God? It says it penetrates to divide the soul and the spirit. Amen. I don't know about you, but I need that. I needed that. I needed to know the truth. Amen. And sometimes I don't like to hear the truth. You know, sometimes, you know, that's when I was before I was like that. I thought I knew it all. I thought things, man, they all made sense to me. But it was the word of God that started correcting me. And through my pastor, you know, they started when he would minister and I would just sit there and like, wow. But I, I, I received it. I received it. And then I understood that, man, man, I'm, I'm, I'm not all that holy. The only thing that I had was maybe a couple holy socks, amen? You see, we got to understand that many of us are still walking in these dark areas within our own lives. And we remain in there. Because why? As we understand that our battle is not against blood and flesh, but it's against the powers of this dark world. Meaning that the enemy is roaming around this world. You don't got to go too far to see all the chaos and stuff that's going on around right now. You don't have to go too far. You just turn on the TV. Start seeing all these, man, even our, our, our uh, you know, I don't, I don't like to get into the political stuff, but you, you don't have to go too far. But I'm going to tell you like this, we need to wake up. Especially God's children. Because right now is the time of opportunity that we can start reaching, especially towards our family, our loved ones that are still lost in this world. And many of us are not rising up because we're still stuck in our own darkness. Mm -hmm. And we need to start getting out of that darkness. Could I get an amen? Mm -hmm. You see, we are in these dark areas. 
What are these dark areas? Where is this darkness at? Glad you guys all asked again this morning. In 1 John 1, 5 through 7, the word of God reads like this. Light and darkness, sin and forgiveness. This is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. In other words, when you're walking with Christ Jesus, you're in the light. There's no darkness in God. Amen. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live. You know, we do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So tell your neighbor, we need to start walking in this light. Amen. You see, many times as Christians, we find ourselves trying to save everyone. Amen. In other words, tell your neighbor like this. We're quick to point the finger at people's faults. We become their counselors. We become the dictators. We all have an answer to it all. Have you ever heard a Christian like that? Mm -hmm. You see, we will tell our friends and families what they have to do to pierce the darkness within their own lives. But yet alone, we are still walking in darkness with our own lives. Mm -hmm. Ouch. In other words, we will be on fire for God, speaking all the right talk, but are we truly walking the right walk? And sometimes, you know, we got to understand, like, I, I'm with the home, you know, I'm always sharing with them at the home and, and giving them their word in the mornings. But if you're going to walk the talk, man, walk it. Don't, 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 don't uh, say that you're doing something that you're not. And, and you got to understand because it's, it's true. People will see it. People will see the trueness in you. People will see the transformation that is in your life. If you want to be people or, or, or like, that's what we're called to do. We're called to win people over to Christ Jesus. But in other words, we need to start taking our ownership, picking up our sword, amen, so we can continue to minister the word of God and understand so that way people can understand it and start coming towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen. So in other words, speaking all that right talk, you know, I see many of those, but are we truly walking the right walk? Amen. And then it goes on. Many of us have walked in darkness so many years of our lives, almost all our lives. And for some of us, we find ourselves here comfortable in the dark. That's another thing that the enemy will use. You know, even when we come to church, it doesn't matter. We can lift our hands up, praise them, you know, but we can still be in that dark area. We get comfortable. And that's one of the things that we have to understand when it comes down, when we're serving God, we can't get comfortable. I couldn't get comfortable. Look at me, I still can't get comfortable right now with a sciatic nerve, but I'm still doing what I'm called to do. Because why? Because this is what my calling is to do, to minister God's word. And if I get comfortable, then, then I won't be doing what I have to do. But this is for God, amen. I already know what my life was. My life, I'm, a, I'm on borrowed time. And my life is to, man, give it the rest to him, amen. And that's what it is. Tell your neighbor, we can't get comfortable. Because we don't want to stay in the dark. You see, we do bad deeds in the darkness and hoping that we don't get caught. When we truly should be getting cut by the word of God, amen. You see, when we were kids, we would stay up real late at night doing things that we shouldn't. Or was it just me? Probably just a pastor, amen? As teenagers, the same thing, but our actions would be much more worse than as a child. You never stayed up when you were a kid real late at night when moms was asleep and then get caught, amen? Or sticking your finger in the chocolate cake, whatever it was. But we would do things that we shouldn't. 
But as we start getting as a teenager, man, things start to turn around. We start getting more and more, like trying to jump out the window, trying to sneak out, different things. And then myself, as a, you know, as a teen, I remember myself, I would stay out late doing things that I shouldn't be doing and paying consequences right after. And as an adult, the same thing would happen. Just now, we, hit, we would hit the bar. We would do other things. And for some of us, man, we would even probably be in jail. But where darkness lies, it was where illegal activity was at. And it's being done until you get caught up in it. Then we start crying to the Lord. Amen. John 13, 19 through 20 says, this is the verdict. Light has, light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. Tell your neighbor, that's it. We're getting out of this dark area. You see, we're exposed now. And that's the thing. You will be exposed. Amen. Like I said today, this morning, we should be living a new creation. We should be living a new life. And, and you know, I, I, I like when I hear, you know, one of the pastors and ministers, he always says, you know, pain has no memory of it. That's why we always run back. Instead, when we should be running forward. Because pain has no memory. And like when I deal with the men's home, you know, they'll come in broken down, one shoe on, and man, all beat up, probably hadn't showered for a month or so. But they come in all broken down, you almost like crying, Lord, Lord, or Pastor, you know, could I come in the home? And you know, I see these men, but then they start getting comfortable. And then they start forgetting the condition when they first came in. Remember, I came from the home too, and I graduated. I'm one of the products of the home, came a pastor behind it. But you know what? I came broken, and I came there to receive to the fullest and surrender my life to God so that way God can do what he had to do in my life. And look now, still moving forward. But even though the light even exposes our weakness in our sin. Ephesians 5.13 says, But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. What we truly need to do is to let Jesus begin to work within our lives. Stop trying to live a life in the dark. We need to pierce the dark world within our own selves. Amen. It is inside of us where it begins. You know, in other words, that if we're going to start trying to make an impact in this world, if we're going to start giving people life or, or, or just hope in this world, we need to learn to pierce our own darkness in here so that way we can be that light in the world so Jesus can shine through us. In Ephesians 5, 8 says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. So, you know, this is just an understanding that we need to start living in the light. It should be evident. Like I said, you know, um, I always share that we got to understand that, that we need to pick up our mantle. Many of our family are counting on it. But because we're still stuck in our own selves, we're not seeing it. Our family is counting on it because... You know, there's a lot of people near us right now that are going to hell because we did not respond to what God had called us to do. We need to respond. We need to pick up our sword. We need to start getting ready to fight this dark world. Amen. Amen. And now we're almost done, church. I'm going to give out three points. But now, how do we use our sword to pierce this dark world? I'm glad you all asked. Number one is with our actions. What are your actions this morning to pierce this dark world? Amen. Matthew 5, 14, 16 says, you are the light of this world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. 
Instead, instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You know, many of us ask, well, Pastor, you know, I, I, I thought, you know, in order, in salvation, it's not by what we do in our works. That's not what's going to save us. You're right. But also, you got to understand this. When you come to salvation and you truly believe, uh, it says faith without works is dead. You can't just say you're a believer and hallelujah, praise God, I'm, I'm saved and then I'm going to go live my life and go out to the nightclub, whatever it is. No, that's, it's not going to work like that. You know, because also the Bible says that God cannot be mocked. You got to understand that if you're going to be, you know, ministering it, if you're going to be living it, you got to also walk it. Amen. Amen. And, and if we're here to give light towards others, how are they going to see us if we're continuing to do live the same way that we try to live when we were in the old? In other words, we're supposed to be the light of this dark world. Are we letting the light shine through us or not? Or are we trying to hide it? What are our actions? Are they good? Or they could even be bad. Bad to the bone, amen? Mm -hmm. You see, we have to ask ourselves, are we children of the light or are we still living the way we used to? Is there change? Is there change being developed within our own lives, amen? To show people like, man, I remember that person. I remember how bad they were. And now look at what God is doing. So man, I want to come around this person because I, I, I can feel the atmosphere. I can feel what's going on. There's real true uh, light that's coming because I know when this person was in that dark world, we become that testimony to their lives when we change. You see, or are we still living a life of temptations? Are we turning away from them? Or are we turning away from them? You see, temptation's always going to be there. The enemy's always going to be there. He's always going to, man, him and his, his, his party, amen, they're going to come there to try to distract you or whatever it is. Temptation will always be there. But then also, you see, it's like this. If you had, for instance, a crack problem, you can't go just go hang out with the crack house, amen, right within them. You know, just say, oh, I'll be back. Or, or if you were an alcoholic, you can't just go to the bar and say, oh, I'm going to go talk to these guys because I want to bring them to the Lord. You're, you're going to end up with them again. That's the things that we have to understand. Or maybe you think, think that drinking, maybe you had a thing for drinking, but you say you're just going to go to their bar, amen, and fellowship. And then next thing you know, the bartender becomes your pastor. You see, if you want to pierce this dark world, sometimes we also have to let things go, our friends, sometimes even family, because a family will take us down, amen? amen. And you gotta understand, and not just say in a harsh way, but sometimes we gotta have to separate, you know, because until we can get strong and do what we have to do, then we can bring our family in. But sometimes, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of family members, they always try to get us to mess up so that way we can be there with them. And sometimes it hurts, but you got to understand that if they want to stay in that darkness, we got to come back to the light. Amen. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, warning against all idolatry. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common or what fellowship can light have? With darkness. Amen. Anyone that is trying to discourage you or distract you. Here is a distraction. Oh come on. Let's have a little dream. It won't hurt. No one will know. Not even your pastor. I won't. But God will. Amen. Yes. Understanding. You know to me. You know I'm there. You know to minister to you. Yeah you can fool me all you want. But in, in reality the only one that you'll fool is yourself. And, 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 and not even God. Amen. Because God knows. God knows, but this is the thing that the enemy will use to try to take us off course. You see, our actions should be facing on what God has called us to do. Our deeds should be righteous deeds for the, for the ones who died, you know, for us. Amen. Jesus Christ, our deeds should be to glorify him. Amen. Amen. And also it says, let that all persons who go to the new creation that God 
created you to be. Start living in the light in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come and the old has gone. The new is here. So we know now that we are a new creation. Amen. We need to start acting like new people. Amen. A new created people. We will be able to make more of an impact on people's lives that we are around. Now, do we make impacts in people's lives that we come around or not? You got to understand, can we sit there and minister to somebody and talk to them about Jesus, amen, and what he has done in our lives or not? Or are we still trying to live the old just to try to win them over? I'm going to tell you like this, you know, all we can do is plant that seed into their lives and let God, you know, start taking, you know, care of it. But we can't impact people once we start changing our own lives, amen? You see, when they see change within our own lives, and we are acting a different way. That's when we'll make that impact. In other words, have you ever seen somebody that says that they are a Christian, but still smoking cigarettes? Or they are still drinking. They are still going out to the club parties. Whatever it is that serves the purpose of this world. Have you ever seen those kind of Christians? Oh yeah, I'm a Christian. But, you know, you got to understand, you know, I, me, myself, you know, from the life that I've been when I see someone like that, I just like, wow, man, wow. You know, you're supposed to be living in truth and that's how you're acting. You know, no, I, 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 my mind is dedicated to the Lord. I truly believe, you know, and I have to walk what I read, amen? And I have to apply it into my own lives. And John 2, 15, 16 says, I'm not loving the world. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves this world, Love for the Father is not in him. For everything of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. Amen. Colossians 3.2 Set your mind on the things above, not on the earthly things. I know this much. If I wouldn't have been out in the if I would have been out of the world, I wouldn't want to be around people that serve God. We need to let the light shine in us. We need to start picking up our mantle for our families, amen? But in other words, we need to start picking up our cross. And another one, how else do we use the sword? With our words, amen? Tell your neighbor, we use the sword with our words because it's the word of God. But the word of God has to be in it. You know, how can God... Get to people without using our words. Amen. What is coming out of our mouth? Colossians 3.2 it says, Set your mind on the things above and not on the earthly things. Are we still talking the same way when we're around the world? Do we still say bad words or on, on social media or in front of our kids, your wife, your husband, or even brothers and sisters or maybe even grandkids? You see, as a kid, Growing up, remember the saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never harm me. But in reality, words will cut very deep. They will cut to our hearts, amen? And more than sure, as a kid, teenagers or adults, someone told you something in your lifetime that hurt you right to the core of the heart, amen? Mm -hmm. We're almost done, guys. Or maybe we told someone something that we know we shouldn't have. Proverbs 11, 9 says, With their mouth, the godless destroys the neighbors. But through the knowledge, the righteousness escapes. Proverbs eleven seventeen: Those who are kind benefit themselves, but the cruel will bring ruin on themselves. We need to conquer our tongue, amen? In other words, we need to start speaking life and not death. Proverbs 15, 1 says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Proverbs 15, 4 says, The soothing tongue is a tree, tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Amen? Yeah. We're almost done. And I'm going to go ahead and just, the last one is, and the last thing we have to do when we use the sword, is with our testimony. First Peter 2, 9. 
It says, But you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, but God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. The definition of testimony is a formal written or spoken statement given in a court of law. In other words, evidence of proof provided by existence. A public recording. How many of us know that we, a lot of us, have an amazing testimony? In other words, our, our testimony should combine the first two points, our actions and our words. Our testimony should be our actions and our words. What it, what, how was our life before we came to Christ? But what did Christ do within our lives that changed? What did God, has God restored in our lives? My testimony is that God saved me from this world that I used to be deceived in, in this dark world. Mm -hmm. God saved my wife, you know, in, in the testimony that it's all God because I know that he's the one that healed my wife. My wife had cancer not once but twice. God healed her. That's why I said, you know, the testimony, it's of Jesus, what he did on that cross. It's not what I did. It's what he did. Amen. What he did for me to give me life still to, to be able to stand here, to, to be able to pick up my mantle so I can go ahead and bring our family that is still lost out there. And, and that's the testimony of Jesus Christ because he chose to give me life. He healed me. He, I understand that it's only him. That I can't do it without him. And that's it. But just with that church today. I'm going to go ahead and we, we can all stand. Amen. And we're going to give a clap offering. Let's give a clap offering to the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And we got to understand. That it's, uh, it's, we carry this armor of God. I'm going to close with this, that we need to keep putting it on every day. We can't just have the armor of God one day and we just put it off to the side. This needs to be on every day. Every day. Paul describes it because without the armor, we're going to get hit. If we're not carrying our, our, our belt of truth, amen, if we're not carrying our breastplate of righteousness, if we're not putting on our shoes, we're not even going to be able to get into battle. If we're not carrying our shield of faith. If we leave one piece, we're open target. But you got to understand that we need to put on this armor every day. Amen. Yeah. And with the prayer that we need to keep praying in the mornings, we need to keep asking God, and we need to keep seeking Him. Amen. But just with that, we're going to go ahead and just close today, today this morning. But right now, if we're tuning in, I want to ask if there's anybody out there that might not know Christ Jesus and would want to dedicate their lives. I want to say a prayer right there. Maybe we backslid. Maybe we're living in, 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 in a time that we're not supposed to be living in. And, you know, we want to get back to Christ. And, and just understanding that maybe if we don't even know Jesus, but today we want to accept them into our heart. I want to say this prayer with you. And if we can all bow our heads and repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus. This morning, I accept you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross. And I believe that you arose on the third day. And I believe that you sit at the right hand of the Father. And I believe now that I'm forgiven for my sins as I repent, Lord. I repent this morning, God, for everything that I have done against you. But now come into my life. And direct my path from here on on. In Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus this morning. And um, also, I'm going to go ahead and pray a song. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, again, Father God, for your word, Father God. Let us be able to keep keeping that armor, uh, your armor within our lives, Father God. Let us keep keeping that our minds, Father God, set on the things above and not on the worldly things, Father God. And keep us strong, Father God, in the battles, Father God, of the enemy when he comes our way, Lord. But through it all this morning, Lord, we want to continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. In Jesus' name we say... Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's put up for Jesus and just one more.
a reminder again, tomorrow from 5 to 7, we'll be here at church, okay? God bless you all and have a blessed day. Amen.